I guess I'll start with Tales of Suspense. It is a, um, I'm gonna show you this first. Um, this is issue 16. So this was considered to be a Iron Man prototype. So it was basically a science fiction story about this giant metal guy. Um, I, can see if I, can I first got into collecting probably around the age of 12 or 13. We would go to a small comic shop that was where we lived. We would like ride our bikes there. And my brother and I would just like scrounge together small amounts of money. It'd be a couple bucks. And we'd go in and just buy like kind of beat up comics that were 10 or 15 years old at the time. I remember they had an amazing Spider-Man 1 like under like a glass shelf like just by the register which was like I don't know just that this exists just to see it was just like mind-blowing at the time but seeing stuff like that just like getting glimpses into the past and getting glimpses into like the history of the comics was like kind of I think what fueled me to want to find more. He's like bluish gray, like this big bulky metal guy. And they took the idea and kind of created Iron Man, which I'll show you in a second. I collected comics as a child, probably from about 12 or 13 until maybe 15. And then I just kind of lost interest. But when I was about 31, I kind of just discovered by accident, rediscovered comics at Half Price Books. I saw they had a bunch of like long boxes that hold comics so they were having like a sidewalk sale so I went up there and they were only a dollar each so I just started grabbing a bunch of them because they, because they were cheap um, and I didn't really re realize what I was getting like for example like one thing I found like a like spider-man 238 is like the first appearance of the hobgoblin which is a character that he fights now let's take the tape off if you put it back and you have tape on, you can stick it to the tape to recover and cause a giant tear. Something unique about that issue is it came with an insert that was stapled between the last page and the back cover, and it was like temporary tattoos. And so it's really hard to find the issue with the tattoos because usually kids took them out and used them. So I just randomly bought this comic at Half Price Books and it, it had those intact. So this is it. Um... This little tiny insert there. So this is the first Iron Man. Um, so you can see he's not really like what he looks like today. Basically they based the character Tony Stark off of Howard Hughes. He was like this millionaire playboy kind of guy. So he had to build, build this like artificial machinery to keep his heart going and then he built this suit around it. So this is just one issue later. This is number 40. So even after the first issue, they decided that the gray was kind of too dull. So they switched him to the gold armor. There's been a lot of elusive comics that I've got my hands on. I mean, I would say probably one that's even fairly recent, like the biggest one was Hulk number one, just because of the historic significance of that. And that was a comic that I always, you know, I, I've always only seen the cover of it. And it just seems like, it's just like one of the founding comics of Marvel, basically. Like that, Fantastic Four, number one, Amazing Fantasy 15. Um, so those comics are kind of like built the foundation of like <clears throat> everything that is Marvel. Really classic cover here. You can see Bruce Banner transforming into the Hulk. Originally, they started him off being gray. But as it turned out, the reason he's green is because the printing process, um, it was not easy to be consistent with gray, so they ended up switching him to be green. I mean, he's kind of got like this Jekyll and Hyde vibe, and almost kind of like Frankenstein in a way that he was drawn um, by Jack Kirby, you know, like a Boris Karloff kind of look to him. Um, so yeah, that one was pretty exciting to get. So this is Avengers 1, um, so first appearance of the Avengers. Really classic cover. Um, this is Jack Kirby, one of Marvel's original artists. This one is signed by Stan Lee. Avengers 1 is probably the first really big one that I got. Like I had that before, like Spider-Man number one or Hulk number one or first appearance of Iron Man or whatever. So like Avengers 1, like that one, that was fairly early on in when I first got back into collecting as an adult. So basically it goes through the story um, just the story of the individual characters and they're trying to fight Thor's brother Loki which he's in a lot of the movies now you can see here Iron Man was still in his old golden armor 
so this is pretty early on after Iron Man was created. When I first got Avengers 1, you know, you want to look through it, obviously, so you want to read it and look at the, all the panels and see, like, you know, what made up the story and look at the artwork. You know, this is like classic Jack Kirby art. This panel here, I always liked. This is where they all come together and they decide that they should form a team and they actually decide to name it. So after I got it, like, I would just... You know, I put it away in the box, obviously, but, um, you know, like, the next day or whatever, I would go back and just get it out and look at the cover, or, you know, obviously, like, in today's world, I would, like, take a picture and put it on Instagram or something like that. So, yeah, I think what drives me is trying to, to get, like, you know, it's called, like, a run, like, a full run of comics, like, Spider-Man 1 through 400 or whatever, like, so then you'll have, like, Obviously this takes many years to do, so like you go to shows and you're like, I need this one issue, and then, you know, it's exciting to find that. Then you just slowly fill in the issues. Um, I mean, getting like, you know, key important comics is obviously exciting too, and because those are harder to get. So, like if you have your, like my Spider-Man run, you know, like I could have a bunch in the hundreds at 129, and it'd be hard to get, because that's the first appearance of the Punisher. So it's like, you're, you've got this gap, and it's not like you can just walk out and just <laughs> go buy it down the street. You know, the reason I want to get like these full runs is because I want to be able to read it. Um, you know, I want to see like the evolution of the character and the history of the character, and even like the evolution of the artist. Because artists usually, you know, start on a comic, they'll do maybe a couple years, and then they'll move on to a different book, or they might even move on to another company. You know, I guess ultimately it's just. Um, the completeness of the collection it's you know i want it to be complete i don't i don't really want to just own like just random issues here and there yeah i have different levels of favorite comics um i mean the hard to get ones are definitely favorites but then there's more that are more favorites because of like the story they have or whatever significance like Avengers number four is the first Silver Age appearance of Captain America. Um, he was kind of created during World War II, and even on the cover of the first issue, he was punching out Hitler. Um, so it was like this whole patriotic thing, but then that kind of died down in the 50s, and they stopped doing issues for him. They did a um, like a little test. There was a series called Strange Tales, which was a pre-hero series, so they, they had a lot of issues that were sci-fi and horror. This is before they had heroes. And then eventually they brought in the Human Torch, um, but one of the issues they had him fighting this guy who was dressed as Captain America. So on the cover they build it as you know Captain America's back. And then if you read the issue at the end they unmask him. It's really just some random villain called the Acrobat. But it was really a test, and, and that's another thing. Every comic has like a letters section, so if you read them you can read in the letters like in issues after that where they're like. You know, due to fan response, we're gonna you know bring Captain America back. So, so then in Avengers Four, they brought him back. Um, so that's definitely a favorite one, just because of the significance of it. Other favorites I have, um, you know, Savage Sword of Conan was a, it was a comic magazine. It was black and white um, because they made it into a magazine, so it wouldn't have to follow the comics code. It was basically made to censor comics because in the '50s there was a lot of horror comics and. You know, people freaked out and everything. Um, so these magazines, these Conan magazines, were fairly graphic. You know, those are some of my favorites um, just because, like, the artwork, like, they really put a lot into those. So the artwork was really good. The covers were, like, painted covers. So they're really good art. Um, I also really liked artist um, Jim Starlin. So he did some stuff in the 70s with a character called Warlock. That was kind of out there and trippy stuff, necessarily. Like, he kind of kind of did the panels in different ways like you can see like here there's like stuff on the side and there's like there's a ton of text which you didn't always see so it was really heavy on the story they brought Thanos into that that was he was part of that They're like X-Men issues. They actually hit a point in the, in the 60s where they stopped printing them and they printed reprints for a couple of years. And then they restarted it. That's when they brought in Wolverine. Um, so that's like X-Men 94 and Giant Size X-Men 1. So this is the first appearance of Wolverine, but then this is where he joins the team, when he joins the X-Men. Um, he first appeared in Incredible Hulk number 181. 
and then eventually he joins the X-Men. So he joins the X-Men um, in Giant Size X-Men number one. That's where they kind of tried out the new team, and then then they restarted the series with X-Men '94. They stopped doing reprints and started doing new original content again. So those are like really good ones. Um, you know, because their their historic significance, but also just seeing this like new team of X Men start for what we know now. These two pages, this is kind of a big spread, just showing in really detailed, dramatic fashion how Iron Man is switching from his old golden armor, and then he's getting his new armor, which ultimately looks a lot like um, what is recognized now. He went through a lot of changes, and here you can see this is the final shot. Um, you know, showing his new mask, it was, like you can see there, it was slightly different than it is now. But ultimately, they're trying to make him more streamlined, less bulky. Um, you know, he's kind of like a lumbering Frankenstein at first. So that's kind of just how he started to get to where he's at now. And as a collector, you kind of always have that dream, like, oh, I'm going to go to a yard sale, and this guy's going to have, like, Amazing Fantasy 15 just sitting there for a dollar or whatever. So... And I've gone to many yard sales and many estate sales hoping that, but it's never panned out. Um, so I think that the collection will never, never necessarily end, but it's definitely not going to continue to grow as it has, because it's kind of reached a point where I feel it's more whole. So I think it's, and as far as what I'm going to do with it, um, just keep it, read through them, um, eventually pass them on to my children. Who hopefully don't just like sell it to buy a car or something. I mean, ultimately, I would like someday to like pass it along. Cool. Maybe that's enough, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> okay.